Hi, welcome to Scouting on Air. I'm Teo Gammons. Scouting on Air is the first televised scouting program about the scout movement today. Today on Scouting on Air, we'll be looking at a special Eagle Court of Honor in Lake Orion, Michigan. Later, we'll be looking at scouts going to the sky for the Aviation Merit Badge. And then we'll be looking at National Jamboree of 2023. And then we have a special guest, Jet Miller from Saginaw, Michigan. First up, we'll go to Lake Orion and see a special court of honor. Yeah, I, I learned a lot from scouts and I know that scouts is going to help me a lot in the future. More than just being able to put Eagle Scout on a resume, just the like skills and lessons that I've learned from being in scouts will really help carry me through life, I feel like. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Yvonne for Scouting On Air. Today we're going to be reviewing the Eagle Project of Noah Johnson, which is these B hotels. I'm right now at the Orion Public Township Library, where Noah Johnson is about to receive his Eagle Scout Award at his Court of Honor. Let's ask him more about the project and the rank and his journey throughout finishing these B hotels. I would say um, some things that have been said about you in terms of, you know, we kind of always joke Noah was the elder bee. He was the oldest in that patrol, Clay's in that patrol, Aiden's that patrol. So we kind of tease that he's the elder bee, but really that kind of signifies a lot about Noah in terms of his maturity. And I think the quality of the work that you see here uh, kind of also shows that as well. Um, a lot of ego projects sometimes like, yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, that's, <laughs> that kind of shows, and you know, a lot of us help Noah do that and I watched him how he put that together. It really does kind of symbolize the kind of person that Noah is. They're basically like little habitats for some native types of bees, um, specifically solitary bees, which um, don't go in hives or anything like that. They don't produce honey um, and a lot of them are endangered. So I built the bee hotels to just provide a shelter for that. Um, there's one out here in the back of the reading garden and one along the Pollyann Trail. Um, my favorite part was probably just getting to work with everybody from my troop. Um, there was a lot of other people that I had involved in the construction and installation. So it was probably just getting to work with people. Noah's Bee Hotels have not only received attention from the bees, but our library patrons as well. We find many library patrons here curious about the new addition. We find them out here looking at it and we see them checking it out. Um, children in the community think it's so cool. I was walking through the lobby the other day and this little boy had a bunch of bee books. And he said, I was just out in the reading garden and I wanted to learn about it. So you are impacting young lives, so good for you. Although my troop leaders definitely helped a lot, I'd say most of the credit probably has to go to my parents. Um, they just, they helped fund it, they helped build it. Um, yeah, they just helped in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Now, what would be one piece of advice you'd have for other people looking to start their Eagle project on their way to Eagle? I'd say just definitely talk to your troop leaders, get a good idea of what a realistic project would be, um, something not too big, not too small. Definitely keep in mind how much time you have, um, just because if you're getting closer to your 18th birthday, you have less time before you age out of like scouts. So just be aware of certain boundaries, I guess. From the Orient Township Library, Ivan Dushkevich for Scouting On Air. Next, scouts will go to the sky for the Aviation Merit Badge. Our flight was real cool. We got real close to Lake Huron, and yeah, my friend Caden got to fly it. Real awesome for him. He's never been in the plane before. 
Yeah, it was overall a really great experience. I learned so much about the planes, how they work, like, and everything about them, from careers to the physics between it. I really learned a lot. I help younger scouts understand how vast Scouts BSA goes from. I mean, we, uh, you know, usually it's just like nods or fires, but this is, you know, a full on plane, and we get to, you know, like be in a cool plane and learn about how planes work. It's so cool how Scouts BSA takes us. Okay. Now we'll be looking at the 2023 National Jamboree. Good evening. Um, I had a couple questions for you about Jamboree 2023 um, that I'd like to ask. Uh, first, can you guys introduce yourselves? Sure. Um, my name is Kevin, uh, Kevin O'Keefe, in fact, and I am the marketing director out here at the Summit Bechtel Reserve in wild and wonderful West Virginia. And I'm Dan Busby. I'm the director of National Jamboree and Summit Outdoor Programs. And the site that Kevin mentioned, the Summit Bechtel Reserve, is the uh, host grounds for the 2023 National Jamboree. Nice. All right. So like I said, I have a couple of questions for you guys. Uh, my first question is, what should, the, what should first time Jamboree attendees prepare themselves for coming with a fresh sleep? So anyone who has never been to a Jamboree before and is coming to this Jamboree um, as their first time, um, I think uh, that really that they should prepare for just a really awesome experience, um, you know, 10 days of hanging out with like, you know, the biggest scouting family um, that you can think of um, and meeting people from all over the country, um, you know, potentially all over the world. Um, and just having a really awesome time and just like get ready to jump in with both feet um, and experience it all. So. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the new and exciting activities are, that are in store for this this next year's Jamboree? So uh, we'll start off with maybe a little bit of a different uh, slant and say that uh, this Jamboree will be the first Jamboree where our Scouts BSA females will come in mass. Uh, since we uh, postponed the 2021 Jamboree, and I'm very excited uh, about that. I have a, my own daughter uh, who will be participating. Uh, also, if uh, a family has a scout that needs special accommodations uh, or may uh, have uh, a caregiver, uh, they should not be dissuaded uh, from attending the Jamboree because there's different points of entry. Um, in regards to making those uh, accommodations uh, that that we're prepared to offer as we've evolved as a site uh, since this will be the fourth Jamboree that that we've held. But to jump in the specific um, activities that um, individuals can participate in, uh, our Order of the Arrow uh, program always does uh, a great job at providing uh, unique and new programming and they basically keep that a secret and release it uh, each time, and it's uh, new and different. Uh, we have the largest man-made rock climbing center in the country, uh, 30 miles of mountain biking trails. We have the longest uh, 
um, feet of zip line uh, on any site uh, in the country. We have a four and a half acre skate park. Uh, that's the second largest outdoor skate park in the com uh, country. Uh, excellent fishing, uh, kayaking, canoeing, crossbows, demonstration areas uh, of programs that you won't see at any other scouting uh, venue. Are there any final tips or tricks or messages you'd like to give to anybody who's planning on attending the Jamboree? Um, so one message that I would have is, um, you know, Jamboree is super cool. Um, we've talked a lot about like all the cool things that are going to happen at Jamboree. Um, but you have to get registered um, and you have to, you know, you have to be registered to come and get here if you want to participate um, as a on-site participant right at the Jamboree. Um, so my biggest tip or my biggest message is if you're not already registered, go and get registered. Awesome. Thank you both so much for taking time out of your evening to come talk to me. Not a problem, Michaela. I can't Absolutely. wait to see you at the Jamboree. I was going to say, too. we're excited to to see you here at the summit next year. Yeah. My name is Kimani Selby and I'm in GE Explorers post 2018. As a kid, all I did was play with Legos. I love that whole type of feeling of creating your own thing or being able to discover your own type of thing. So when my mom introduced me to the Explorers program, I thought it was a good opportunity because at the time I really hadn't heard too much about um, electrical engineering or different facets of engineering. And as a high school student, I felt like I needed to know more about that. And so I thought it was a great opportunity for me to take. And when we first got there, it was a small meeting, but it really quickly grew into something that I was super interested in. The best thing about the Explorer opportunity is that it gives kids the opportunity to really bring real live experiences to life. Um, they can touch it, they can feel it, and it becomes a reality. They're able to study about it more. They're able to understand um, what it is that they want to do in life, what facet of it that they want to do. At the Explorers program, I feel like I have kind of a more heartfelt drive to go into engineering because I feel like I've learned so much. I feel that it kind of encouraged my whole drive to go to college to study engineering. It's exciting to see Kimana is really engaged in, um, in being involved in robotics and engineering. Um, we know that that is something that he's passionate about. Uh, we don't have to ask him, do you want to do this? He always gets up, he's always engaged, always coming up with new ideas, always studying. Another great aspect about the Exploring Engineering program is the fact that you meet so many students and kids just like yourself, and that really encourages you to pursue that whole engineering drive and make great friendships because people who have those same type of interests as you are always going to be your best friends. When the kids come together, they don't know each other, but they're able to come together and build and network and make friends that are for life across technology. Now I would encourage parents to get involved with Explore, exploring programs, um, exchanging career ideas. When I was an engineer, this is what we did. Wow, how things have changed now with the new generation of engineers. Exploring. Discover your future. Welcome back to Scouting on Air. I'm Theo Gammons. Today I have Jet Miller, who was at Isle Royale this summer during the wildfires, and who he assisted the first responders and park rangers to help clear the trail from all the visitors. Jet, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, so I'm a junior in high school, and uh, I'm from Troop 345 out of Shields, Michigan. Cool. So as your summer experience happened, can you just give us a little rundown of how did you come across this campfire or wildfire at the camp? So it was our second to last day out on uh, the backpacking trip on Isle Royal, and we were about an hour or a mile away from the campsite we were planning on getting to when we uh, started to see like an orange hue on the ground, and we figured it might have just been some natural phenomenon, so we didn't think anything of it and kept walking. But then it sounded like there was a semi coming through the woods, and we knew that couldn't have been a semi since there's no way to get that onto the island or in the area of the island we were at. So we were looking through like the trees, thinking maybe it's a moose, and we didn't see it. But that's when we heard what sounded to be like bubble wrap popping right next to us, and we looked over like all at the same time uh, to see this pine tree engulf in flames in a matter of an Go. instant 
And at that moment, we knew we had to get out of that area as fast as we could to a safe area and contact park rangers. So how many people were with you roughly when you were taking this trek? Uh, so including myself, we had eight people uh, on the trip. Okay. And so what was the first thing you immediately did when you saw the fire? Uh, so when we saw the fire, uh, we went up the trail until we could find a safe place to uh, stay. Uh, that way we would be away from the fire for the time being. And when we got to that area, we checked to see if we had cell phone service so we could call 911 or park rangers service, whatever we could uh, access first. And uh, we made the call once we were safe. And we tried to figure out on the map where we were so that way we could tell 911 or the park service that uh, we were at the location we were at. And so they would be, a be able to come check out the fire and uh, make sure we were okay uh, and get us out of safety if need be. Somebody coming up the trail, we gotta help them. You know what I mean by that? Yeah. So at any point, did you feel like that your scouting uh, experiences helped you along the way with this experience? I think my scouting experience helped me a lot with uh, the experience uh, of the net or uh, of the forest fire and with the help of all the stuff I've been doing for merit badges or rank advancement as well as the other scouts I think as a collective we were able to uh, get out and into a safe area quickly and safely and uh, once we calmed down a little we were able to uh, do what we had to do to uh, make sure the fire was uh, kept in as small of an area as possible. We were watching the trail where we came from uh, just to make sure that if someone was coming down from where we came from we would be able to go and help them if uh, they were caught in that trail because only like 10 minutes after we had gotten out the trail where we had walked on had already uh, been taken over by the fire. So if someone had come down the trail, we would have been able to rush in and bring them uh, to our safe area. That's good. Um, one other thing too was, uh, how would you react, if you think, if you were not in scouts? Do you think that scouting may have uh, helped you overall a lot, or do you think you would have reacted the same without scouting? I definitely do believe I would have felt a lot less prepared and uh, worried since I wouldn't have known necessarily exactly what to do uh, or be able to orient uh, myself so that we could call park uh, service and have them come to where we were. So I think that the scouting uh, stuff that I've learned really made it so we were able to get help uh, for the fire as fast as possible. Right. That sounds uh like the best way I think you could do is, you know, if you're prepared as a scout, you know, if you take your emergency preparedness merit badge and life saving, these all help you for real world events. They're not just there to, uh, you know, get you the next rank. Of course, there is some uh, co and go with those so you can get to the next rank, but there's specific standards. Um, did you guys take, uh, I just understood you guys took videos. Did you guys end up having those used or like for those videos, like something that you're like, wow, that's kind of cool to look back and see that I was there? Uh, yeah, so uh, a local news station, uh, WNEM uh, TV5, uh, got uh, access to the videos that we took, and they uh, made like a news report on the forest fire, and three members of our troop, one of our scoutmasters and two scouts, were on there uh, talking about the experience, and so... Looking back on it, uh, like it's good for memories, even though we'll always remember that day. But being able to see how like deadly it could be, it uh, it's a shocker. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, and another thing is, what do you think other scouts, younger scouts in particular, will take from this experience that you experienced? I think if a scout doesn't uh, truly believe that being in scouting can uh, make you be prepared for certain uh, occurrences such as a wildfire or like 
flash flood, anything of that sort. Uh, if they know that someone who was in scouting along with uh, like a troop was in the situation and was prepared due to scouting uh, and knowing how to act in the situation, uh, the scout would realize that scouting does help with being prepared uh, and they will uh, learn how to deal with this kind of situation. Very much. Well, thank you, Jet, for coming out and taking the time to be interviewed. Uh, this is Scouting on Air. I'm Teo Gammons. Thank you for watching.